You know, it's great to look at graphs. They're really pretty. And sometimes if you just look at them, you see things that are kind of cool. For example, take a look at this picture here. This is a graph of a circle, you can see. But the cool thing is that notice that if you look at the axes, in particular the y-axis, you notice something really interesting. That what happens on the right-hand side of the y-axis is exactly what happens on the left. In fact, you can see that for yourself. Take a look at the left. And now I'm going to put a mirror here. And do you see how the mirror is really actually just showing you a reflection of that? And you get this. We say this is symmetric around the y-axis. Namely, if whatever happens on this side has a, a reflected version on the other side, it's symmetric. A mirror will show it. Here's another example of, of some kind of symmetry. Let's see if we can figure out what kind of symmetry this is. Here's a different circle. Now, this is not symmetric around the y-axis anymore, right? And you can see that for yourself, because look at this picture. And now let's look over the y-axis here. If I were to put this here, notice, wow, that's like a little almondy thing. Doesn't look like a circle at all, does it? So, so, and if I try it this way, it looks like some kind of weird, kind of almost figure eight type thing, not the circle that we want. So, but check out the x-axis and notice that with respect to the x-axis, in fact, bingo. There's a nice reflection there. This is symmetric with respect to the x-axis, which means, in fact, that whatever happens above the x-axis has a corresponding reflection partner below the x-axis. And then finally, you could have something like this, just your ordinary, everyday circle centered at the origin. And notice that it actually has the feature that it is uh, symmetric with respect to the x-axis and also symmetric with respect to the y-axis, has a lot of symmetry. And in this case, we say this is symmetric to the origin, meaning that whatever happens kind of over here has a mirror reflection kind of right through the origin over here. And we can make this a little bit more rigorous if we start to look at kind of the plots of functions. Let's look at another example of a function. This is kind of a crazy looking function that actually involves absolute values in some complicated way. But anyway, let's look at the picture. Notice that there's a symmetry. There's a symmetry with respect to the y-axis, right? You can check it out for yourself and see it because you can see the symmetry right there, right? Whoop, there it is. There's a reflection of it. There it is. Boom. And you can see it in terms of the fact that by taking an x value and a y value on the graph, notice that the flip, which is negative x, has the same y value. That's what it means to flip over the, the y-axis or be symmetric with respect to the y-axis. It means that if you change the x to negative x, you're still at the same y-value. In fact, we can uh, generalize this to so take a look at the symmetry with respect to the x-axis. You can see this is a mirror reflection. And again, what happens? If I have a point here, x comma y, then its partner is x comma minus y, which means if you're symmetric uh, with respect to the x-axis, it means that if you replace the, the y by negative y, you get the exact same x value here. So that's a way of seeing if you're symmetric with respect to the x-axis. And then if you're something crazy like this, this has this kind of a funny um, symmetry, which I can't really show you with a mirror, but I can show you with one of these things. Check this out. If I first reflect. Uh, with respect to the x-axis, now watch me, Whoop. boom, and now reflect with respect to the y-axis, it matches up perfectly. So if I take an x comma y and I make both of them negative, in fact, what I see here is that that is still going to be uh, on, the, on the graph. So that is to say that if I flip the x and the y and make them both negative, in fact, I'm still on this graph, still on the graph. So now we can actually put this into practice, and we can actually test any particular curve you give me for symmetry. If you want to check symmetry with respect to the y-axis, you just replace all the x's by negative x's and see if you get the exact same thing that you started with. If so, then you have uh, symmetry uh, with respect to the y-axis. With respect to the x-axis, you replace all the y's by negative y's and see if you get the exact same thing. And then for the origin, you, you f uh, switch the signs of the x's and the y's together and see if you get the same thing. So let's go to an example and, and see and test. So 
here's an equation. y equals 2x squared minus 3. And what I want to do is I want to see if there's any symmetry here. So first, let's text, uh, check symmetry with respect to the y-axis. So how do I check symmetry with respect to the y-axis? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace all the x's by negative x's. And so what happens if I do that? Well, the y, I'm going to put down y equals, I'm going to create a new formula now, 2 times, and then in place of x, I'm going to put in negative x squared minus 3. And now I'm going to simplify that, and my question is, will this, will this equation be the same as the original equation? Well, let's see. Well, that negative is really a negative 1, and negative 1 squared is positive 1. So in fact, this is really the same thing as y equals 2 times x squared minus 3. It doesn't make a difference if x is positive or negative. When you square it, you're just going to get the same answer. So it's the same thing as x squared. Well, notice that those two things actually are identical. And so since by changing x to negative x, it doesn't change anything, I see that this is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. So it's symmetric with respect to the y-axis, yes. Now, let's see if it's symmetric with respect to the x-axis. How would we check that? Well, it's a similar procedure. Now I replace all the y's by negative y's. So I'm going to put negative y in place of y and change nothing else. And now let's solve this for y by multiplying both sides by negative 1, which means that this becomes a negative 2x squared, and that becomes a plus 3. Now, are these two equations the same? No, they're not. They're different, which means that this graph is not going to be symmetric with respect to the x-axis. And finally, let's see if it's symmetric with respect to the origin. What do I do there? Well, there I change everything. I replace the y's by negative y's and the x's by negative x's. And I simplify. So let's just write this as we did this before. This is just going to be 2x squared minus 3. And then I'll multiply through by negative 1 to solve for y. And I see this. And is that the exact same thing as this? Answer is no. No, it's not. So in fact, this graph will not be symmetric with respect to the origin. The only symmetry that we discovered was with respect to the y-axis, which means that whatever happens to the right of the y-axis must happen reflectively on the left of the y-axis. Now, I happen to have actually a graph of this equation, and I wanted to share it with you, because check it out. Look how pretty. It's a parabola. And notice that, in fact, it's exactly what, what we predicted. Notice that it is reflected with respect, it is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. And you can see that for yourself. Look how beautiful. Ooh, there it is. But it's not, reflect, it's not symmetric with respect to the x-axis, because you flip this to here, you're not going to get the same thing. And it's certainly not re reflect, um, symmetric with respect to the origin, because you know, um, a point you know, over here is not the same point as the point kind of across from it. So in fact, this has a symmetry with respect to the y-axis. Looking at symmetry is really a, a fantastic way of trying to understand the graph of a function better. And by uh, the graph of, a, of a, any kind of equation or any kind of thing at all, because it allows us to appreciate, in fact, what we're seeing, to see deeply. So here's an example where you can see, by just some simple tests, whether we're going to have certain symmetries over the x-axis, over the y-axis, or over the origin. I'll see you soon.